Um, I am an economist based in Mountain View. And I spent many years actually studying queries. I'm trying to understand what's driving the query trends. It could be economy, it could be user behavior change, it could be actually special events, such as like whenever a famous people dies, we got a lot of spikes in the queries as well. And also it could be weather. The reason is, you know, when it gets warm, people stay indoor, they don't search. And when it gets really cold, I'm sorry, the other opposite. When it gets really hot, they go out, they don't search, but it's cold, they stay indoor, we see a lot of queries. So we do a lot of studies like that. Um, today, actually, you have seen a lot of, uh, uh, heard a lot about Google Insights. Uh, unfortunately, you can hear a little more from me. And, uh, but I am actually going a little, uh, one or two steps a little further, because as an economist, we want to actually use the Google Insights data to understand what's going on in, in the economy. And before I came here, my colleagues in Israel sent me a few data sets. So I'm going to showcase a little bit what's going on in, in, uh, in Israel and how I can use some of the insights data to read about the, the economy in Israel. But before we get a little too serious, I'm, uh, I'm going to have some fun first, uh, just you know, make things a little more interesting. Um, my first question for the, everyone here is, when do you think it's the biggest day of the drunk people in a year? New Year's. Yeah. It turned out you, you can just type in vodka or handover into uh, Google Insights tool, and you can find the answer. Oh, here you go. Oh, OK. Here you go. So you can play with it. This is actually the pattern in the United States. So you type, I typed in handover, and uh, where is the? Theme. Okay. It doesn't work in the screen. Huh? Um, so yeah, and you see the red curve is actually the vodka search query trend, and the handover is actually the blue curve. You see the blue curve really spikes in the New Year's Day, but the vodka actually is a day ahead. So people were buying a lot of alcohol the day ahead, and then they got really drunk the day after. The spike is actually huge. And other than New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, the other days are weekend, right? And so basically in the U.S., people buy alcohol, buy booze on um, Saturday, they get drunk on Sunday, wake up, they need handover recipe. So all it means like this Google Insights data is just great. They tell us a lot about human behavior. You know, in the past, we have a hard time collecting data to understand the world. Right now, it's right here. So basically, you can type in the query or keywords in the Google Insights, and then also we provide this great feature to actually have the trend for entire category. Um, what you see here is, you know, drill down is we have a travel. Under travel, you have many more sub-verticals. So we actually have five levels categories in Google Insights. A little chart you see here is just travel verticals, trends over the time. And apparently, you know, most people are searching for travel cars during the summer, and it kind of goes down when the weather gets cold. So pretty much, this is the same pattern in the nor northern the um, hemisphere. It's all similar to that. So that's just a kind of introduction to Google Insights, but you really heard so much about it. But I want to actually tell you uh, two more fun stories. Uh, how many of our women here know this fashion trend called feather hair extension? Never heard of it? Well, it's a trend, actually, in the United States and Canada last year. So for some reason, I don't understand why, they start put feathers on it, on the hair, extended. So it's very fashionable, pretty much starting for last summer, around March, April time frame. Of course, no retailer would carry a feather for women's accessory, right? So where did they find it? They found it in this fish, fishing equipment stores. Because, you know, fishermen use this feather to decorate the fishing poles. So basically, these women just went to the stores and, and, and bought them all. So until the, all the fishermen were like, fishing fans like really complained, they couldn't find it. So it was a great, actually, media story last year. And you can see for Google Trends, it's really trending up last summer and really came down after summer ended. So if I'm a retailer, I'm selling women's fashion items, I was like, oh, OK, this year I'm going to carry a lot of this feather stuff. I can make more money out of it. Do you think it's going to happen? Now, if you look at the trend, we're already on May now, and there's no spike at all. 
So for some reason, this train just flashed by and didn't come back at all. So, so I encourage these retailers or e-tailers to look at this fashion trend and understand what's going on and don't stock feather this year. Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of money and run out, you know, get, get into trouble. So this just showcases what a great tour it is to understand, you know, the trends for uh, new products and fashion trend. The other great story I want to tell you is, uh, you know, I'm an economics team. I work with many different teams. For two or three years, actually, I've been helping our PR team to create this top costume list of Halloween. So I understand in Israel, uh, we don't celebrate Halloween here, right? You have some different Purim. So what, what's the most popular costume this year? Angry Bird. Did you know that before that? All right. So this is a lot. Um, actually, back in September last year, so I actually went to the Google queries, and um, I actually compared the query trends and found out this is actually a month before the Halloween. I already found out what the the popular costume would be. Folks, number one is Angry Birds. But the second one caught me by surprise. Uh, it's a black swan. Also, for some reason, that because that movie, all these women want to dress like a black swan because they're scary and sexy. That's all at the same time. So that's usually what, what the uh, women want to go for, for the costumes, right? And other than that, there's also Playboy Bunny, thanks to uh, a, a TV series. So all these costumes are highly correlated to pop culture. And we could really read that from the Google Insights data. And I've been doing this pretty much every year now, the past three years. And I passed this list to this program called Good Morning America. So basically, they will like, hey, we think this year's top costumes would be this and this, and tell the audience, all based on the Google Insights data. Um, actually, a year before that, 2010, the top costume also caught everybody by surprise. It's, it turned out to be a Jersey Shore. It, was that a popular show here at all? No, never heard of it. <laughs> it was widely popular in the US and Amer I think also in Australia. So figure it out. So great, this is just great stories about Google Insights. But of course, that's not my job. Most of my job, actually, is trying to understand economy and in the various different countries. So now the question is, how are we going to use this inside data to read about economy? And so the data I got from our colleague, including the um, uh, unemployment data, in, including the consumer sentiments and consumption data, et cetera. So I actually played with our model and, and tried to understand a little better what's going on in Israel. So this work actually was primarily done by my boss, who was our chief economist and one of my colleagues uh, a couple of years ago. And so they really, uh, wrote a paper and was widely circulated. And also a lot of people all over the world would take the notes. They try to borrow the same approach to actually predict and now cast uh, their own economy. Uh, this included one lady from Bank of Israel. So she basically got a lot of data from, I think for now, team. Uh, from the, sorry, the inside team, and uh, she was trying to build different models and understand whether Google Insights can predict the downturn, the big recession back in the end of 2008, and also she did some further work as well. So here I'm, I'm not going to talk about her work. So basically, I just ran the model, um, did some small work, and I'm trying to read the leaves about, I mean, tea, well, there's an American saying, a little teacups, you know, trying to find the leaves, what's going on in the future. So I'm going to talk a little about that. So the main framework, actually, is to basically you get the, the economic indicators, uh, the, the history, especially last periods. And then you incorporate what you can get from Google Insight data and plus some other variables. And then you build a forecast model and try and understand what's going to happen in the next period. So we believe by incorporating Google Insights, we can improve the forecast accuracy. So we're going to improve the forecast a little better. Not only that, so most of these indicators are released only um, like periodically. So some of the, in some of the insights, some of the, some of the indicators come out every month. Some, some will come out every quarter. So you had to wait quite a while before you actually finally get that measure. And by using Google Insights data, we think you can get that reading a little earlier. So for some of the investors, some of the stock uh, market players, they might be able to borrow these tools and, and, and get some advantage in understanding what's going on in the economy. Yeah. 
So the first metric I played with is the uh, private consumption data for Israel. So it's a, it's a, I think it's a quarterly data released by the Census Bureau. Um, so the black curve you see there is the uh, um, consumption trend for the last five years. So basically, the first dip you see is the, you know, the Great Recession. And then Israel actually bounced back pretty fast the, when people started to consume and spend up pretty uh, a lot again. But then, I think in 2000, later part of 2011, or actually mid part, it dramatically slowed down and, and plateaued and been stagnating. So I believe, I asked my colleagues, they, they think there's also related to the Israel's Occupy movement. Um, so there's two time periods that there's a change in terms of the trend for that. Now, when I did this model for you, you asked the two verticals, uh, two categories are usually very closely correlated with the consumption or air travel and the luxury goods because these verticals pretty much can read uh, consumers sort of like, you know, spending behavior, right? Because they have more money in the hand, so they want to buy, they want to travel, they want to buy luxury goods. So the two red curves are trends for Israel uh, for these two verticals. I actually deseasonalized them because there's seasonality for them. And I deseasonalized them to get the trends better. So you definitely do, do notice there's a dip during the first recession, but then also there is a dip also during the slowdown as well. Um, so they are natural candidates for our model, but it turned out they don't fit very well. So I went back to look for some other verticals that might explain this consumption trend a little better. So instead, I found two smaller sort of subcategories. One is the apparel services, the other one is credit cards. So what is apparel services? Actually, these are queries related to tailor or dry cleaning. Um, for some reason, and I noticed like, you know, if the economy is good, people tend to do more dry cleaning, but the economy is not, it's not good, they probably want to cl clean the clothes themselves. <laughs> so, yeah, there's some intuitive uh, meaning behind that. And also credit cards. Yeah, you know, you want to buy more stuff, you can apply for more credit cards. And when you are short of funds and uh, you don't want to spend, you probably will apply for credit cards less. So naturally, these verticals, two verticals, seem to be pretty well correlated to the cons consumption curve. But now the question is, so the consumption data I got stopped at Q1 2012, this year. We are well into the middle part of 2000, uh, Q2 right now. The question is, what do you think this, this quarter's consumption data? From that curve, we notice that it's flattened out, right? It's like flat right now. What do you think this quarter is going to be like? And if you look at the two trends up there, both apparel services and credit cards all slowed down quite a bit in the last few months. So even just from reading this, my prediction is that, you know, the consumption this quarter is not going to be too good. It's probably going to be flat a little less, at least from the Google Insights trends. Am I correct or not? I don't know. So you're going to wait until probably uh, in, a few, in a month or so, and you can sort of compare the actual official release with, with my prediction here. So this is my prediction. Basically, the blue line is, is, a, is, a, is a prediction based on our training model fit. So when you notice that the consumption data, oh, actually, this consumption data is updated to Q1. So interesting enough, Q1, actually, there's a bump. So it, it stagnated for most of 2011. There's a bump in Q1 that the consumption got better. But my prediction is that the Q2 is not going to have a bump. But I could be wrong. But this is just based on our model, right? And I can only get as good as I can get from based on the, uh, the model I have. The next one I want to showcase is actually the uh, housing price. The reason that I uh, played with this model because my colleagues told me and everybody in Israel now was worried about the housing bubble. Um, actually, same with a lot of other countries too. You know, um, there, there's a lot of talk about housing bubble in the emer especially emerging markets. And so the, the black curve is actually the housing price in the last five years. And you can see it's kind of flat until 2008. And after the recession, it just kind of like grow crazy for quite a while. And then all of a sudden fall in 2011, and it's pretty much flat right now. So whether there's a barbell or not, when is it going to burst? Can we tell from the Google Trends? But let's take a look what's happening. So the most 
sort of correlated uh, verticals or categories turn out to be proper property development and real estate agencies. So naturally, they should be probably corresponding to the house price or related to housing price. So what you see that the property development seems to be pretty flat until 2008. And right before the price started to climb up, it started you know, get up quite a bit. And then the activity slowed down quite a bit in the second part of 2010. That's even also before the price start to uh, slow down. So it seems like there's a little lagging here. You know, the, the, the curve does not exactly match the housing price, but seems to tell, but there's a little time difference. And when the property development really slowed down, the price actually fall a little bit later. So at least we can read just from that. I mean, at least it's my intuitive sort of interpretation based on these tra uh, trends. This, the last one is actually real estate agencies, right? When price goes up and people are selling, buying, the agencies get really busy. So you can see the trend matches the price quite a bit. But once again, there's a little lack there. And then we notice the agency queries really start to fall again before the price really uh, um, slowed down a little bit. So the question is, you know, um, there's not entirely, you know, the pattern doesn't really exactly match, but there's might, maybe a lack here. So by using these, these trends, I could build a forecast model and try and find out what price is going on for, for Israel for next month. So here's my result. Uh, basically, once again, the blue curve is one period forecast. You know, I'm basically always trying to forecast one period ahead of time. Here is actually one month ahead of time. And the model actually fitted the actual curve pretty well. And the red curve actually is a baseline model that does not use Google Insights at all. It's just purely time series model um, that does not use any insights. So I, based on that, I believe insights data fits better. And I use some lag variables as well, trying to make the bottom model better. But from this, what you notice is that the blue line pretty much is flat for most of 2012. So based on this, all I can tell you is I think this month or next month, the price seems to be stabilizing. It's not falling or, or going up. But is that going to be bubble in the next six months? I really cannot tell you just because our model is, real, is actually limited. You know, I, we can usually tell you one month or two months ahead of time. But the bubble actually can you know, take a few more months to come. Who knows, right? I have no idea. But anyway, at least we, we know that the price is probably going to be flat or stable uh, for the next month. Anyway, so basically this talk is just help you to understand that the insights, you can, you can take the insights data to the next level and, and you, you know, if you are your own economist, you're welcome to play this insights data and read this vertical trends and make your judgment you know, about the economy. Or I'm sure you also read the news quite a bit too. So, but for, for in terms of applications, you know, I believe you can use them for, to monitor sales trend. Uh, we actually have some projects going on to try and understand auto sales trend, apparel sales trend, and also especially the example about costumes and this, this, this feather thing help you to monitor the, uh, the fashion trend, the new product trend, the gadget trend as well. And for more serious people, you know, we are, we're trying to um, push more economists to use the insights data to, to now cast economics to understand when it's going to turn in point. Is a recession coming or not? Are we coming out of recession or not? Are we recovering better or not? So, so these questions probably can be answered well using this data we have since, since we released this data to public. But I think also there are other applications. And one project I was involved on in many years ago is understanding the effectiveness of the advertising. So we believe, you know, I think there's an example earlier when, when uh, major advertisers uh, having commercials on TV, we also was noticed like the queries would go up, especially in the U.S. People, you know, sitting in the sofa watching TV, they see a car model, they, they, they will search the cars as well. So inside tech can be used to measure this effectiveness of the advertising. And also, I often heard pe hear people, oh, yeah, you have so much data in Google, you have especially all the search queries. You probably have a sort of advantage. You know, can, you, can you use that for stock market? You, know, you can get rich yourself. I say, number one, I would never do that because it's against our policy. Number two, it's up to you. you know, if you believe you can use this data to gain advantage in your investment, go ahead and do it. But I wouldn't bet on it. Anyway, that's my talk. And so if you have any questions, you know, I'd be here for lunch, and you're welcome to um, approach me and answer, ask them. Yeah.
Thank you.